and we are live hello hello everyone and welcome to our monday speaker series i am so 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 excited to have our fantastic leslie here but before we go on to leslie let's just remember everyone remind everyone why we're here who are we and why is this all about so hi my name is dr monica and i create bad moms what does that mean well that means that in my bad mom club all we learn and teach about is breaking balanced authentic and deserving it's all about finding the balance in your body and mind really being your authentic self and understanding that this is good enough and also learning about being deserving of taking time for yourself putting yourself first really putting that time into you yourself and you and no one else and how important that is for general health mental health and also for progress in life so this is what we're doing and uh, myself i'm a scientist and i'm really really kind of skilled in nutrition however i am not very skilled in other topics around health and we all know that health requires a lot of different you know aspects of working so it is physical transformation it is mental transformation and it's just so many different ways to approach health and breaking bad and this is why i've got speaker series every monday on because we've got beautiful experts such as leslie who talk to us on different topics everything health related so today we're going to talk everything about self-love and how this actually impacts the choices that we make and this i know that one very well so i'm really really excited <laughs> so leslie thank you so much for joining us today please why don't you just tell us who you are what do you do and uh, yeah what what is it actually that you offer people what is all that self-love and stuff Mm, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Monica. It's so lovely to be here. And hello, everyone. Um, yeah, let me tell you a little bit about myself, how I, I started, you know, becoming, um, I'm a health um, mindset and energy coach. I work mainly on mindset and energy. But as Dr. Monica just said, you know, so much is about, you know, how you feel about yourself, how you look after yourself and how you treat yourself is about kind of how your life, how everything on the outside also shows up. So um, I'll give you a little bit of a rundown on what I've done because I wasn't always a coach though I've always been an entrepreneur and um, I started my entrepreneurial journey when I first went left out of university I was like right I want to start my own company so um, I you know as anyone knows when they first start their own company at the beginning it was really tough I had two jobs I was working as a cleaner as well on the side to you know make it happen but I grew the company I was a jewelry designer I decided to have a jewelry company and I grew it um, over the next few years to be a global um, success I was selling all over the world. Um, I, was, uh, I had a, a six-figure um, turnover, and it was amazing to do. Yeah, it was wonderful. And then it, I kind of grew it and grew it and grew it to seven figures. And then at the same time, I was also working for companies such as um, uh, Cartier, Vivian Westwood, um, Dior uh, as, as a consultant. So from the outside, my life looked amazing. I looked like I kind of had it all. You know, I'd bought the shiny stuff. I'd got the house, the car, all of that. And though on the inside, it was a very, very different story. At the time, I was um, crippled with uh, imposter syndrome, had severe anxiety. Um, I was extremely depressed. And um, and I was, I was, you know, there were many, many times where I didn't think I was going to make it. I was very suicidal. Um, and so it made me realize how different life can be on the appearance, the outside appearance, and then what's going on inside. And there came a point where I was like, I knew that if I wanted to carry on, if I wanted to remain here, then I had to do something about it. And it was that point really where I became you know, first thing I asked for help, you know, I think Monica knows that one of the most important things is to get help, get support um, on your journey. And then the next thing I did is I became really obsessed with how the brain worked, how we could change our thoughts, how we could change our feelings. I became really um, working deeply with energy and I decided to retrain. I became an NLP master practitioner, a hypnotherapist, a Reiki master, because I wanted to know how I could 
get out of that situation, all those negative thoughts I was having about myself. Um, and as I began to transform, what happened is people around me started to notice and started to ask me if I could help them. And as I began to help them transform, transform their lives, I was like, oh my God, this is, this is what I should be doing. This is really like my kind of light bulb moment of I can actually help people and make a difference. And that was 14 years ago now. So I've had yeah. this, yeah, it was amazing. And since then I've been able to help along with a team, I've been able to help thousands of people change their lives, change how they see themselves and yeah, live the life that they actually dream of um so that's a little bit about me and kind of how I got to this point so I I kind of like to share that story so that people can see you know that transformation can happen and also you know I'm still in the work now I still need to do the work every day I still need to do the mindset work and still need to do the self-love work because I think self-mastery is um it's a journey isn't it Monica you can't you know it's, it's something that doesn't end you know self-mastery is a life work you know you get more deeper into that self-love into that work of um yeah being the best version of yourself and there's always more there's always more you can expand into Oh, I absolutely love this. Honestly, what a journey you've been on. And I, I like that because in a lot of cases, you got, you know, something in this rags to riches and sometimes it's difficult to identify with those. But in your case, you're like, you've been to the riches and you're like, yes, I am successful. But that just wasn't what was fulfilling you. It wasn't your, you know, mission in life, which is so good to hear because I believe that a lot of us get caught in a certain life that we're supposed to live, but we don't really feel it. And I've I've been there myself. I am there actually, you mm. know, I love science. I love being a scientist, but I prefer helping people directly and actually changing lives and that's what kind of gives me that boost and just lifts my energies up and all these things so it's it's really good to hear another coach you know going through that transformation and totally agree with you it is about constant constant transformation what a lot of people think is that it's just oh you know it's too difficult to do these things for the whole life but they don't understand is that things go in level or in layers like an onion if you want and you know you like you scratch one layer and then you're comfortable in there and then you scratch the other layer so you don't go straight to the core yeah. <laughs> and that's why a lot of true. people get scared don't they because they think that you're just gonna drill to the core and they don't understand that what we're doing is we're peeling all, off layers so talking about that right transformation is incredibly personal and when you're working with someone they need to know you on a personal level they really you need to trust them they need to know you so you need to share a lot of stuff so how does this go with like your work uh, especially if you work with energies and and mindfulness and NLP and all these things or maybe before we go into this a lot of people don't actually know what NLP and Reiki and all these things mean I mean they've heard the okay. words but yeah. they don't know what it means right yeah. so can you explain that first and then we're going to go on to the next Yes, definitely. So NLP is neuro linguistic programming. So neuro is brain, linguistic is language, and programming is it's so basically how most of us have never actually programmed our mind. Our mind, you know, it's not reprogramming in a way. It's like programming because our minds have just been allowed to just wander into whatever way that it wants to you know we've never actually trained it you know what's happened is that we're born you know as a perfect amazing little human being and then we start to put these limits limitations on ourselves these beliefs these thoughts that we have repetitive thoughts that we have that become beliefs that can hold us back and that can keep us from being um you know the the true version of ourselves because underneath all those layers that Monica was saying um, you are an infinite, incredible, amazing being. And the self-love that I'm going to be talking to you about today, we are born with that. You know, a baby doesn't, you look at a baby, it's not there looking at its thighs going, oh God, look at my thighs. You know, I just can't, how can I even get out of, you know, how can I even move? Or And also it doesn't, you know, a baby doesn't get up and walk and then say, 
sit, you know, sit down because it can't manage on the first time and say, I'm not going to do it or look at the other children walking and say, oh, well, they're, they're obviously walkers. It's not for me. I'm not a walker. I'm just going to sit here. A baby is curious about life. And, and, we, and at that point, it hasn't got all those layers that we've put on ourselves. And so we are, that is what you are underneath. And when we talk about self-love, you already are self-love. And it's almost like you're starting to be aware of the things that are stopping you from self-love those those layers that you've put on yourself those beliefs that you've put on yourself and as monica said with taking off the the layers of the onion what happens is is that you start to realize that um there's more there's more self-love there's more joy there's more happiness and then you get used to a certain certain level of that you kind of go outside your comfort zone and you're like oh this is this is this is good i feel this and then and then you start getting used to that and then you want the next level it's a bit like um you know, when we set a goal and when, when the beginning, when we set the goal, we're like, oh, my God, it, I can't believe I'm never going to get there. And then when you're there, you're like, oh, that wasn't that hard, actually. I've got to set a new goal because what's happened is that you've changed as a person, you've expanded as a person and you've grown as a person. And so that's what when we're talking about life work, it's making those tiny changes, those small changes that then make a difference. Because if you imagine you're going this way. And even if you change like by 1%, you change the direction by 1%, you end up with a new trajectory. You end up in a complete different direction. So it's not all, I mean, I'm sure um, you teach a lot of this about how these small micro changes yeah. that you make in your life make the massive differences. And it's not, you know, like that kind of cabbage diet, you know, where the, you kind of stick the needle over here and then three weeks later you flip it back. It's about those tiny tiny changes that you make within yourself within how you feel and see yourself that do make this huge difference so it's it's not like you suddenly have to make these changes it's, it's making a change and then it becomes part of you becomes normal and then you want to make another change and it just gets better and better and better absolutely this is something that i actually spoke about in my recent five-day challenge and um i spoke about it in terms of habit creation habit change and you know all the cues that we have and how we create the habit but they're also like you don't have to just completely scratch the habit off you just change one tiny part of that habit you know instead of a glass of wine with dinner every single evening you maybe do it just on a saturday you know so you're still having that glass of wine but you're not completely giving up uh, so yeah just micro changes absolutely i oh, love this mm -hmm. well in, in interest of time, I mean, I could talk to you for forever and ever, but in interest of time, let's go towards the self-love. And yes. what is self-love? How do you define this? How do people, how do people actually, you know, accept this this term? Because we, we hear about this all the time, especially on social media. Self-love, self-care, do this, do that. And sometimes it's just kind of very saturated out there with this. So how do you define it and what impact does it have on our choices? Mm, yeah, thank you. It's a beautiful question, actually, Monica. Um, the first thing I would say is the impact it has on your choices is, is kind of everything because you're, the success that you get is very much depends on what you feel that you're, you deserve. You know, and often what happens, what happened to me is I, I had that huge amount of success and I didn't feel I deserved it. So underneath, I couldn't enjoy it you know, now I have success and I can enjoy it because I now know that I'm worthy of it. So, and every decision that you make is very much dependent on, you know, whether you feel like you're worthy of it, you deserve it, all of these things, you give yourself permission for it. All of these things are so deeply rooted within us. And I would say self-love, it's very important to actually find your version of self-love. And, and I've got some journal questions that I'd like to give you. And the first question is, what does self-love look like for me? What does it, because self-love to me will be completely different to self-love to Monica. Like self-love to me is making sure that I have time alone. That is something really important to me, making sure that I make sure I get out in nature. That is really important to me. So self-love is about doing something that makes you feel good, that's about you, that's about nobody else. And, and there's, an, there's an idea of self-love being self selfish. And actually, one thing that um, one of my coaches once told me, which stuck to me so deeply, is that your light doesn't belong to you. Your brilliance doesn't belong to you. It belongs to everybody around you. And when you start to feed your own light, to feed your own self-love when you start to do that you can then shine brilliantly for everyone else when you don't when you put yourself at the bottom of the list you start dimming your light 
and dimming your light and then you can't shine so self-love is actually the opposite of being self selfish because that that really did something in my head it's like oh my god it's about me being the best version of myself so that i can show up for my daughter for my husband for my clients for everybody in this most brilliant version of me so yeah the, the question i'm going to give you for general question is what does self-love look like for me that's the first one what does loving me look like for me? And again, that would be different. So loving me looks like, so for me, it's important that when, when I feel loving, I have a lot of tactile. I need to be touched. That's something that's important for me. I need to feel that I'm, I'm interesting, you know, to people. That's some, something that's important to me, but it might not be for you. And it probably won't be for, you know, definitely won't be for anyone. The next question is, what does self-respect look like for me? So what is that for you? Is that boundaries? Is that for me, self-respect is very much giving myself boundaries, making sure I look after my energy, making sure that I'm giving myself the time that I need between my clients and also making sure I give myself time between being with my daughter and with my husband, that I have time to recharge. That's, that's mine. But self-respect will be something else for you. And then the last one I want to um, invite you to as well is what does self-trust look like for me? because trust is such an important part of um, self-love, is when you start doing those little things, those little things, if you do something for yourself every day that's even five minutes that you're giving yourself self-love, at that moment when you're giving yourself that five minutes, you're telling yourself you're worthy. You're telling yourself you deserve it. So when you do those small things, what happens is when you do get the bigger things, when those big successes happen, when those big things come into your life, you're you're already you've practiced that muscle of accepting and receiving and knowing that you deserve it. So it's very much about doing those small, small, tiny movements of self-love as well. And it's what self-love is for you. It's really easy to look around. And I love that you said that it's, it's such a word that's banded about now. But it's actually to spend five or ten minutes and say, well, what is that for me? What do I need? Do I need a bath? Is it to treat myself with a, something once a week? What is what is that? You know, is it? Get, you know, spending five minutes doing my nails? What, you know, is it spending five minutes meditating? What mm. is that for you? So I think I really invite you to go deeper into that. And, and self-love is just spending time doing something that makes you feel good, that's only about you. It's nothing about anybody else. It's only about you feeling good. Yes. <laughs> and it's different even every day you know it doesn't have to be the same every day like to me today my self-love was taking the barbecue chair outside on the garden taking my laptop and just removing myself from the house sitting on the sunshine and just continue working on my business on the sun from the garden that was it that was all i did I was there yeah. for half an hour. That was it. You know, I didn't disrupt anything. I just relocated. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And it's it's exactly that. It's giving yourself, and I, I, I give myself 10 minutes of reading, and it doesn't feel like a lot to people. But for me, to sit down with a book, to read for 10 minutes is like, and I just do it. And even if I've only got five minutes and I feel like I can only read a couple of pages, I do that as an action of self love. It's like, I, this five minutes is for me and me yeah. alone, and I'm going to sit down drink a cup of tea and read something and that in itself is sending those messages to myself that I am mm. worth it you know there's there's a lot of deeper work that you can do this and I work a lot with my clients in really getting underneath those beliefs that are limiting you going underneath the the mindset that's been kind of piled on you and connect reconnecting to your soul reconnecting to that self-love on a really deep level though so this even these small actions of just journaling and spending five minutes on whatever that means to you every day that will make a difference if you're doing it um every single day huge difference i think this is actually especially important topic for moms and this is why i really wanted to speak about this topic with my bad mom club is because um us moms we tend to forget about ourselves like it i think it's engraved in our um just evolution it's yeah. like everything and everyone else first but us last and we don't understand that if we do this we are burning out and like you said we can't show up as our best version to then take care of everything and everyone else so what i noticed that a very important part of self-love could be and correct me if i'm wrong um is setting up boundaries for your children that is something that i've learned to do with my child and i am actually you have to be stern say hey 
this is my time <laughs> my time stay out of the bathroom when i'm doing my thing okay so my time <laughs> so, absolutely yeah definitely setting boundaries and i think for mums this is really really a difficult one so oh, yeah yeah so can you expand on that a little bit how do you yeah. work with mums and having the problems of setting boundaries with husbands and children and pets and all that yeah, and I'm a mum myself, so I know very well the, you know, the the kind of what happens as well you, when you become a mum, you also lose a lot of your identity because suddenly who you were, the role that you had before becomes very different. You know, suddenly it's all about somebody else. And what happens is I think when they're newborn babies, it has to be all about that, you know, so it's a it's a full time. And then what happens is that we just get so ingrained in that that we it's very hard to take time back for ourselves. Though one of the things and I, and that I think is really, really important is to also, what I've started to do with a lot of my clients and myself who've got children is also, as well as like knowing that we boundaries to take back, I've also started suggesting, which has helped me a lot with my daughter and has helped clients massively, is to have something that's called special time for them. So they also get 10 or 15 minutes where I set like, like um, uh, where I set my alarm clock and I say, right, this is your special time. So this is my time with you. And during that time, I literally, I'm not allowed to do anything else apart from do what they want to do for that 15 minutes. And 15 minutes doesn't sound like long. When you have a child, it's a long time because normally you're you're multitasking you know you're sort of doing something else and you're in the middle of something and you're kind of half with them and half not with them and or you're sort of like answering your phone or doing something so you're kind of there and kind of not but this having this 15 minutes what's happened is that is i found and my clients have found is that that's their time and they know that that's 100 percent for them so when they and they know that they've got you for that moment and it's like amazing it's like that that's enough in a way it's like those 15 minutes they're like ah oh, and then afterwards, like right now, it's my time. Now is the time for me. I've now got this minute because you've fed yeah. them 100% with all of your energy for that time. And also, I think it's also knowing. And one of the things was that shift is that the when you do give yourself that time, that energy and that effort um, to actually do something for yourself, or I, I should say not effort, it's like actually the opposite of effort. When you actually get into something that you do that you just love doing that's for you, then when you come back from that, even if it is just like Monica said, half an hour of sitting out in the sun, you feel different. So you can then, you're able to um, deal with your children differently, you know, and there is a point, it's like, okay, now this is my time, now this is, I'm focusing on me, and then afterwards I'll be able to focus on you. And just setting up that boundaries, and, and also by doing that, you're setting them up to know that they are worthy. Okay, so when you've got children, it's also an example you're setting for them. So you're saying, when you're saying that, no, I, I'm important, my time is important, and I need to feed my soul, my mm -hmm. happiness, what you're doing is you're giving them a great model, role model of knowing that they are then worthy. And they, because I think we've learned it from our mums, you know, who've just did everything for us, who were like, you know, did absolutely everything. It was far more, I think, the generation before that. So what you're doing is just being aware is when you're doing this, you're also sending a message to your son or your daughter that they are worthy of putting themselves first, that they are worthy of that time that they need, you know, when they're going to be growing up and what they're going to teach their kids. So you're kind of changing the I suppose changing the mold that was given to you by your parents by actually saying, you know, no, I, I, I need to have time for myself, even mm -hmm. if it's five minutes and maybe start with three minutes at the beginning and then, you know, so that they get used to it as well. But that special time really helped me a lot and has helped a lot of my clients because then they they feel like they get you, they get your whole attention. Even if you can do it for 10 minutes at the beginning, you'll be amazed at how, um, how much bonding happens within that time when you're just focused on them. Yes, absolutely. I think in a lot of cases, people think in so many different um, aspects of life, not just this, but so many different aspects, they, they think they need to go 100% in all or nothing, but they don't understand that, you know, sometimes it's enough to just put a, a small proportion. Everything's in balance, right? Um, I love what you said. We kind of started doing this instinctively with my daughter. Uh, we wake up in the morning earlier than my partner and we have our playtime. So we have a healthy breakfast. We sit at the table. We talk about, you know, how was your sleep? How was your night? Did you have any nice dreams? And then the two of us have our morning stretch together and we go play games. 
that's what we do. It's just her and I, we play puzzles or, or memory games or guess who, something like that. And that is me away from the phone, away from everything else, both of us still in pajamas and just playing with each other. And just sets her up for the day so nicely. She's so happy that I have no problems with her for the rest of the day whatsoever, because I do keep reminding her, you had mommy time in the morning. Now you came back from school, but mommy still has work time now. So I need to still do the work time. And then you're gonna have mommy time before bed again. And she's like, yeah, that's fine. No that's the thing. I think we are so used to multitasking and I didn't realize until I actually did this, how little I actually spend 100% with her. You know, there's so much because I'm, you know, a busy mom and, you know, I'm doing things and you've got the house, you've got your business, you've got so many things. And suddenly I was like, oh my God, like I really rarely do this, like 100% with her. And because there's so many things, you know, I, I feel like I'm with her, but like I'm sort of cleaning or or answering an email or something, you know. So this was really and, and it's amazing how that then she was like, OK, that's now now it's your time. You you need to do that. And I think as well, it's because it's really easy to put all tasks in, you know, into your um, calendar of what you need to do, you know, and then you'll prioritize that. But when it's yourself when it's about putting tasks for yourself, like spending time on yourself, then it's because it's a muscle we haven't used a lot. It's mm. something that we're not so used to. So it's almost like you, I would really invite you at the beginning to, to really slot in a time at the beginning where you do that. Maybe you have 10 minutes in the morning before anyone gets up or I get up an hour before anybody else in my house. I get up early so that I have that amount, amount of time in the morning that's just about me or finding whatever it is the time in the day where you start to do that where you actually slot in a time that's about you and also start being aware of knowing how important that is to be able to show up as your best self and to be able to change the decisions you make because the more that you pour into yourself the more that you actually start pouring your own you know being at the front of your own queue you know being at the front first person like you know when we talk about the ox oxygen mask being there and being the first person start the more you're pouring into yourself the more that you have for everybody else around you and the more that then you can actually make those decisions and what happens is when you start putting yourself first or doing things for yourself you will look at a decision that comes up and and you start to learn to trust yourself more the more you listen to yourself and that's something i wanted to have a quick touch on is that we're so used to consuming consuming and we want everything from the external to be the answer you know we want the answers from everybody else when you have the answers within you you have that intuition within you what we've done is that we've just got so busy with so much noise that we don't or we can't hear it so i invite you as well to just start to slow down and listen to yourself and watch out for those those intuitive decision making things that come up. We've all got this amazing GPS system of intuition, like red flags and green flags. Yeah. It's just, you know, and I think, I don't know, I'm sure you as well, Monica, there's been times where you haven't listened to your intuition and afterwards you've been like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, I didn't listen. So just being aware of starting to be aware of your surroundings around you and notice when you are getting those green flags and red flags, it can be small things like, you know, something really flows really, really easily. Everything kind of falls into place. That could be a green flag. Or if something, um, you know, you're coming across and it's a lot of, um, you know, blocks or maybe emails aren't going through and, you know, mis miscommunication with the person, maybe that's a red flag. It's worth starting to look at these things. So starting to listen to yourself and spending that time every single day with that with that silence, with that starting to listen to yourself, or maybe it could be meditation, or going for a walk, whatever it is, starting to listen to those little signals you're getting will also help you to make your decisions and make you go in the direction that your body is actually telling you rather than your mind kind of getting caught up in, in kind of what is racing along, actually starting to listen because you have that gut instinct and you have also this kind of guidance around you all the time. Um. I couldn't say it better, honestly. I think what this reminds me of is our brain is just, it's made to protect us, right? Our brain is there to say, ah, don't do this, you'll die. But we can obviously retrain it. And a lot of things are just being fear. It's just fear from unknown. Human beings in general are just so 
uh, notoriously known for like really being scared of everything that's different, everything that's new. We tend to, you know, put it down. We tend to talk down about new stuff. We tend to just say, oh, this is not good because I don't know anything about it. We've got a very good situation in the world at the moment. So like, no, this is not good because I don't know much about it, right? Mm. But a lot of cases, like you say, you got this gut instinct, you got the sixth sense, however you want to call it. And I love Mel Robbins and her five second rule because mm. it helped me move forward in life because I was very stuck. So instead of sitting here and overthinking, you know, all the possibilities and pluses and minuses, la la la, because my brain is going to find more minuses than pluses. It's mm -hmm. wired this way, we all are. Mm -hmm. Instead of that, I just go five, four, three, two, one, let's do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, love that. And also it's that it's that thing, isn't it? If it's not gonna matter in five years, then it's not, you know, it's I like that. And, and I love there's um there's a really brilliant thing you can do to to separate your intuition from fear. Because often because it's it, you can think, okay, is it fear stopping me or is it my intuition stopping me? What is it? Because they they kind of they're both quite strong feelings and anything like you said, anything outside your comfort zone, fear will be there. It will come up because you're going outside your comfort zone. It's um, just a natural part of it. And um, there are things that you can do to actually be aware of, of how you can start mastering your fear. One of the things is first of all, be aware of it, whether it's fear. And the next thing is once you have that awareness, you acknowledge it, then you express it. So you can write it down or you can, um, uh, yeah, journal it out, or you can dance, paint, whatever it is. And then the next thing is release it, which comes from that action. And also you can shake it out. There's a lot of things I'm sure you do as well, Monica, with taking fear out of your body, EFT, which is tapping. If you don't know about that, it's brilliant. Look it up. Though so one of the things that you can really use to decide whether it's fear or intuition is actually at that moment say, okay, first thing, be really honest with yourself. And am I afraid? Am I afraid of this? And then the next thing you can do is say, okay, if I put the fear to one side, if I put that fear out of the question, would how do I feel about it? How do I still feel about this situation? And then you can go more into that gut instinct about whether it's something, okay, if I'm just going to put that fear out all the way for the moment, what, what do I feel about this? And start being aware of that subtle changes. And honestly, a lot of it is just being really honest to yourself at that moment and knowing that if it is fear, and I love this, there's an analogy is fear is always going to be in the car with you. It's just whether you put it in the back seat or you let it drive. So it's like... <laughs> Pop it in the back. <laughs> Brilliant. We also say, um, I like to say this one, um, feel the fear and do it anyway. Absolutely. It's always going to be there. It's always going to be there. Yeah. And it's just, you can start to, rather than it mastering you, you can start to, and there's always a message in that fear. It's a very interesting once you start going into the medicine behind it. It's like there's always a medicine within there. Because often we think when we have a problem, we think that that is, you know, we've got to avoid it, we've got to push it away. But actually, often when we look into it, we go into that and we see the reason why it's there. You've got this great medicine, there's a great teacher within it. And actually, often when you go into, um, if you go into the darkness, there's always the light. So by going into it and actually journaling it out, writing it out, saying, okay, what is the message behind this? What is there? What, you know, what, what can I be learning from this? What can I, what can it be teaching me? What's it showing up for me? And start to kind of, almost invite it in almost like okay mm -hmm. like, you know what have you got to show me what can I learn from this then you can go through it and then you end up being stronger more capable and more able to trust yourself through kind of going through that 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 journey of it the journey of it and mastering it absolutely beautiful honestly I could just speak to you for mm -hmm. hours and hours but obviously <laughs> our audience <laughs> yeah. is a bit shorter attention span probably so <laughs> Let's wrap it up. This was absolutely beautiful. I really, really like hearing that, you know, other coaches are addressing the same things that I'm addressing, but through different gates, windows, however you want to call them. But in the end of the day, it's all about getting that one step closer to being healthier and happier version of yourself. And that counts physical, mental health, and all the energies around it. So Leslie, thank you so much for coming on and for being our guests today. It's been a pleasure. Before we go, where can people find you? How can people get in touch with you? And uh, what can you offer them? Ah, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, it's been wonderful being here and talking about it. And I love that because you're, um, 
in the on the physical side as well as the men mental and emotional and I'm really on the energetic side and the mental and emotional so it really goes beautifully and <laughs> I'm absolutely the same as you it's just all about for me it's all about people knowing that they can find more and more freedom within themselves um, through doing this work through and then get happier and you know have a more joyful life just yeah Oh, don't we all want that? And isn't that something that we can all gain through doing this work? So, yeah, thank you so much. And you can find me on um, Instagram. I am leslie.calvo um, on my website, www.lesliecalvo.com. Um, and, yeah, I would love to speak to you more and answer any questions that you have. So just come on and uh, send me a DM, and I'd love to um, hear more about your journey and speak to you and get to know you better. So, so thank you so much, Monica. And you're very welcome. I will make sure that you can pop your links uh, in the comments here. We are on my Facebook page, Dr. Monica Gostich. We are in Facebook group, Bad Mom Club. And we are also on YouTube. So I'll make sure that all your links um, arrive at the right destinations. People do get in touch with Leslie. As you can see, she's absolutely phenomenal. And you know what? The conversation just flows. So this is one of those green flags. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So get in touch with her. Um, I'm sure she's got, you know, a discovery call. She can just talk to you. Yeah. Just like yeah, just jump on like, uh, you know, I have a half an hour discovery call where we just find out where you're at, find out what you um yeah, just if, if I could help you in, you know, gaining this new version of yourself, I help women and men, um, you know, connect to their soul and find that true happiness inside. So I'd love to chat to you more about that. Yes. Don't neglect these parts of your health and your being. I think we mentioned awareness so many times today. It all starts with the awareness. And once you start paying attention to what's happening here and here and all around us, things are much easier and life becomes mm -hmm much much happier so mm. again thank you so much for being with us and yes have a fantastic week it's monday let's go smile it's, love it. it's my favorite day of the week anyway so yeah. <laughs> i'm really really excited to start this week and to just spread positive energy around this globe so thank you again and have a fantastic evening bye yeah have a wonderful week everyone bye thank you